What's good, everybody? Welcome back to L Dubs Boxing. Back with another live stream. Um, here to talk about the fight cards for this weekend, uh, 14th through the 16th. Um, it's a lot of cards, man. A lot of a lot is on a lot of different platforms, and I'm gonna break it down for everybody. Um, if you want to refer to my description box, go ahead and check that out. It got the uh, the dates, the times, and the platform that uh, this fight could be on. So um, feel free to check it out. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, it's a lot. It's a lot of weekend. It's a lot of fights this weekend. I call it. This is like the hardcore boxing fan type of weekend. The type, kind of like myself, that like to watch all the fights. I mean, I think if you one of those guys like me, you're gonna enjoy this. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna post uh the streaming schedule in the chat for you guys to check it out. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to uh come through, check it out. You know what I'm saying? I got this from um. A fellow off of Twitter, off of Twitter, name is uh Tim Boxeo. He keep track of all the uh, you know, what I'm saying the underground fights and just about every card that there there is. He got the streaming for it, and he'll post like little clips on his uh Twitter page and whatnot. So shout out to him, man. Y'all go subscribe to him, Tim uh Tim Boxeo on Twitter. But that's the link right there in the in the description. If you click on that link. It'll, it'll show you all the schedules, the schedule of the fights this week, uh, where to find the link, what times, all that good stuff, man. It's everything. It's like I'm telling you, this is a hardcore boxing fan weekend. Not a lot of big names on this um, this weekend, but it's a lot of it's a lot of fights though on a bunch of different platforms. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna get into it right now. So tonight you got uh you got a Golden Boy card. Part of the Thursday night fight series. It's gonna be on the zone and the Facebook uh Golden Boy page. So feel free to check it out. Start time is uh is uh 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. If y'all here in the uh, on the West Coast, like I am, seven o'clock. That's the main card gonna start. Um the main event you got Carlos Morales versus uh Mercito Mercito Hester. I messed his name up. But we all remember Hester, man. Hester is a softball from the Philippines. You know what I'm saying? He fought uh, Jorge Linares. Uh, I think it was beginning of last year. You know what I'm saying? Decent softball. Really ain't really lived up to his potential that I thought. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was a kind of a, you know, a, a type of version of Pacquiao. They fight in that style, but he's more selective with his shots. He can, he can make for some boring fights. You know what I'm saying? His last couple performances haven't been really that good. And never been really too high on him, but I always seen that, you know, he has some traits that Pacquiao has. What's up, Ag Rachel? What's good, man? It's a lot of fights this weekend, man. A lot of fights. You know what I'm saying? I know it ain't the big names like a lot of people be uh looking for, but it's a lot of fights. Especially if you're trying to learn about some of these fighters. You know what I'm saying? It's some good some good fighters though. Carlos Morales now, if y'all remember him. He's the toughest opponent Ryan Garcia had, you know what I'm saying, up to date. You know what I'm saying? He gave Ryan Garcia some trouble, you know what I'm saying? And that was the fight before Ryan Garcia hooked up with um, Eddie Reynoso, a guy with Canelo's team. And he was touching up Ryan Garcia. I believe that fight, Ryan Garcia was doing pretty good early, but he started to rough him up, started catching with some jabs and, and some good, uh, you know what I'm saying, overhand right hands. We all know Ryan Garcia has a tendency of, pulling back with his hands down and his head straight up. And that was one of the fights that say, oh, you know what I'm saying? He's not going to be able to hang with the uh, the younger fighters that we got coming up. But anybody else better than that would be able to, you know, would touch him up. So that's the guy, Carlos Morales. He's a tough fighter. And I expect this this could be a good little style matchup. Uh, Hester is a boxer. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, he got the footwork like Pacquiao. He's trying to mimic him a little bit. Definitely don't got the power. Definitely don't got the work rate, but you know, you know how it is. Um, my ride's gonna bring pressure, so it's a good little fight, man. On the card, uh, the co man, you got Charles Huerte versus uh, Jonathan Oquendo. Oquendo is from Puerto Rico. His last fight, uh, he fought Lamont Rose Jr. We just seen him last week. That was a tough fight, close, close fight. They uh, they uh, they gave to uh, Lamont Roach. Well, Oquendo can fight, man. Um, he's a vet. Um, Warte, his last fight, I believe, was with Jojo Diaz. He lost that fight, uh, 12 rounds, 10 rounds decision. I'm sorry. 
But he comes to fight. So this is a good little matchup on this card at 130 pounds. So I look forward to this, man. I look forward to it. Um, open up the main card. You got Travel Maison versus Diego Cruz. Maison is a, a young prospect uh, from Austin, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Tall kid. Got some punching power. Um, you know what I'm saying? Very flashy in the ring. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? And he brings the smoke. Oh, he's fighting a German type of opponent. So, um, you know, he should be, you know, he, he's a good prospect to look forward to down the road at 154 pounds. Depends how um how they move him, you know what I'm saying? How go the boy move him. Uh, but he's a good fighter, man. Exciting. Exciting. Very flashy fighter. So that's card tonight. You know what I'm saying? Check my description box, you know what I'm saying? Again, to refer back. Uh, Check your, check your time, you know what I'm saying, your East Coast or West Coast. I'm on the West Coast, so it's going to start at 7 o'clock for me, and then y'all act accordingly to that. So it should be on the Zone or the uh, – you can catch it on the Zone or the Golden Boy Facebook page. All right. Now off to my next card, man. I'm saying it's, it's crazy. This weekend is crazy. Um, Let me see. Okay, let's talk about this one. Now this card right here is from France, you know what I'm saying. Like I said, I got the link. Um, to all the fights above, feel free to uh, check that out. You know what I'm saying? You can check the times and all that good stuff. But you have a world, world title fight, cruiserweight world champion. Um, his name is Arson. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a, he's a WBA super champion. He's training with, um, with Abel Sanchez. Uh, he's a good fighter, man. Very strong. What's up, Marlos Corner? What's good, man? What's going on with you? But uh, my man Arson is a good fighter, man. Strong. What's up, real Ghana? Peace, bro. Um, Arson is real. He's a good. He's a good, strong fighter. Twenty-four and zero with sixteen knockouts. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting a guy named Kane Watts from the um, from Australia. I believe he's thirty-seven years old. So, uh, my man uh, Arson should win this fight, man. You know, if y'all follow the cruiserweight division, man, they got they got like three or four WBA champions, yo. It's crazy. You got my man Arson. He's a super he's a super champion. The regular type, man. I'm confused. I know it was uh shooting off got one. <laughs> Leverdev got another one. And then this guy Ryan Mahardy from Belgium. Uh black dude kind of looked like uh Thomas Delorme. He got another one. So it's four champions, bro. But I think this one is the best. He stopped the guy from Belgium, the black guy from Belgium. He stopped him. So, you know what I'm saying? I think he's a top five, maybe four uh, cruiserweight uh, right now since uh, Usyk moved up. He's like, he's like, he's a good fighter, though. You know what I'm saying? Able to do well with these guys right here. So I look forward uh, for him to uh, get a stoppage win. Um, Michael Soro, 154-pound contender. You know what I'm saying? Good fighter. He's a top 10 fighter, too. He trained by uh Abel Sanchez. Um, real good fighter, man. He's underrated. Um, he got two losses of his career. Um, I remember he lost, he had a good ass fight with uh Brian Castano. We've seen him uh a couple of weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? A good fight. What's up, Jalik the leader? Um, what's going on, bro? So Soro can fight, man. Um this fight he he has a it's a all it's like a domestic fight with Charles B2. This is another good uh 154 pounder. He's tall. Vito like six two softball. You know what I'm saying? I believe he got I, I don't know his record off top, but I believe he like 46 or 45 and three. So he got a lot of fights. Michael Soro, you know what I'm saying? He's a strong puncher. You know what I'm saying? Very skilled, um, aggressive. You know, Abel, Abel got him right. Now I, I think Abel does a good job with this level of uh um of, you know fighter sorrow and uh arson so um yeah man i look forward to these guys putting on the show man because sorrow like i said it's some smoke it's a smoke at 154 maybe he can run it back with uh with castano or laura you know what i'm saying uh lost dawkins what's good man <laughs> what's going on bro what's good with you yeah so yeah that's a that's another car so like i said for you guys just coming in you know what i'm saying i got the schedule you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guy uh Tim Baseo on trip on Twitter. He got the schedule to all the fights. I'm gonna repost it. If y'all want the times and everything, what's up, Marcus Johnson? What's good? Salute. 
Um, I just reposted back in the chat, but um, that's like the schedule to all these underground fights. So wouldn't would not tell you the times and the links and all that good shit. So um, if you guys hardcore like I am and want to check these fighters out and whatnot, then there you go right there. So yeah, man. Like I said again, for everybody coming in, <clears throat> this is a hardcore fight fan weekend. It's a bunch of cards, it's a bunch of fights all across the globe. You know what I'm saying? Different platforms and whatnot. And um, you know what I'm saying? It's one, it's not a lot of big names, but it's some good names, some decent names, and some good fighters, some good fights, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Feel free to check it out. All right. So the next card I want to talk about is the ESPN plus card. It's a Friday, it's a Friday night. Well, Friday daytime. You got uh, Rocky Fielder making his return <laughs> after the Canelo Alvarez beatdown. Um, he's fighting at 175 this fight. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting an um, African guy. I can't pronounce his name. Abdullah. We're going to run with that. Um, you know, Rocky Fielder, <laughs> we all know what it was last year when he fought Canelo. It was just a, a one-side beatdown. I don't really give Can Canelo no props on that, winning that regular title. I don't count that, but, you know, it is what it is. He went in there and beat the brakes off Rocky Fielder. Uh, he'd been out of the ring for a minute. He supposed to came back like maybe two months ago, but I think he got he injured something. I can't remember. But now he's making his uh, debut in uh, 2019. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Like uh, this one, ESPN uh, Plus, um, 12 o'clock East Coast time. So y'all make adjustments uh, as need be. Um, Mark Murray, former world title challenger, he's on this card. Terry Flanagan, former world champion, he's on this card making, you know what I'm saying, trying to stay busy. And the female Tasha Jonas, you know what I'm saying? Miss GB, she's on this card. So if you guys are interested to see how these guys look, you know what I'm saying? They can be possible. Uh, you know, they pop they can be in some good fights like uh let me see. Rocky, Rocky Fielding. I heard his name linked to Anthony Sims Jr. <laughs> Rocky Bond Fielding. <laughs> Who you got, Law? What you mean? Uh what you mean, Wallow? Who I got? Um, and which one? So Rocky Fielding, you know what I'm saying, he can be a possible uh, fight with uh, Anthony Sims Jr. I think that's a good fight. That's a good step up for uh, Sims. I think he got some, uh, he got a WBC ranking now. And uh, that's a good fight, man, to see where he stands at at 168. Um, Martin Murray, he can he can get a fight at 168, you know what I'm saying. Um, somebody, some up-and-coming fighter may be looking to, to test him or whatever. Same as Terry Flanagan. He fights at 140 now. I mean... That's a good fight for Robert Easter, you know what I'm saying? If you think about it, Terry Flanagan versus Robert Easter Jr., both uh, former uh, lightweight champions, fighting at 140. Uh, Terry Flanagan is a boxer, so it's not going to be too rough on Easter. When he last fight, when he fought Granados, he was trading toe, toe for toe, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, so I'm interested in this, though. I want to see how they look. All right, so the next card I want to get into, you know what I'm saying, Showbox. Like I said, it's a bunch of cards, man. <laughs> it's a bunch of cards, man. So y'all got to, you know what I'm saying, try to keep up. But it's, it's a lot of shit popping off. Like I said, once again, I got I got the link to all the fights in the description. Well, in the chat, if you check my description, I got the uh, fights there, too, and all that good stuff, too. So this Showbox card, man, Showbox been having some real compared to fight. Oh, Fielding. I think Fielding gonna win this fight right here. He's fighting the African guy, uh, tough, durable guy. I think he probably he probably stop him late. Um, but Fielding versus Anthony Sims, I got Anthony Sims. I think Anthony Sims gonna all box him. Probably stop him too. Anthony Sims got some. He got some crack. But um, this Showbox card, man, it's 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 uh it's always been competitive. All the Showbox cards this this year. Has been somewhat competitive, probably except for maybe a couple, but the rest of them have been like 50 50. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is another one like that. Um, you got feeling about UD, yeah, yeah, I can see that though, because this dude tough, the African got tough, and I don't think he's been stopped, so yeah, I can see that. Um, the combined record of this showbox card is like 65 and one, you know what I'm saying? So that tells you all these guys have been matched up tough. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a Samson Lukowicz card. You know what I'm saying? The promoter of Fortuna. I'm sorry. Fortuna and um, 
get it been a beat. They've been a beat ass. And also, I think Sergio Martinez got a couple of prizes on this card. So check it out, man. It's Eric Vega versus uh, Alberto Parmeda. You know what I'm saying? Well to wait. Marcos Escudero versus Joe, uh, Joe, Joe George. I think George is from Houston. You know what I'm saying? Light heavyweight. Strong guy. Strong. What's up, Stormy B, man? What's good? I got Sims. Yeah, I got Sims, too. I think Sims going to beat the brakes off of Rocky Field if they fight. But Rocky Field is acting like he don't know who Sims is, though, man. Give that man a chance. <laughs> and then you got uh, Vidal versus uh, Preto. So, like I said, Showbox been having. If you like to watch a lot of up and coming prospects, man, um, check it out, man, because they match them tough. Like I said, the combined record is 65 and 1. You know what I'm saying? So take that however, however you want to take it. But um, I like, I, I enjoy Showbox, man. The last Showbox with, uh, with the Mayweather promotion, man, I, I liked it. You know what I'm saying? Roley got him a quick knockout. You know what I'm saying? Xavier Martinez got like a 30 second knockout. My man Richardson Hitchin looked good. Uh, who else was on that card? Oh, uh, Kevin Newman. He got his payback. So, yeah, man, I like I like those cars, man. They be competitive fights for the most part. Um, all right, on to the next card, man. Like I said, man, this is a crazy week. It's kind of an odd weekend because it ain't no big fights, but it's like <laughs> it's a lot of fights everywhere. All right, excuse me. All right, next card, man. So this is a Broadway boxing card. This is gonna be live on um. The UFC fight pass, you know what I'm saying? Lou DeBella card. You got some heavyweights. Um, you got Junior Far. He's number seven in WBO. You know what I'm saying? He's fighting uh, Devin Vargas, former Olympian. And now, fun fact, man, uh, Junior Far, he was he was in the run to be Tyson Fury's last opponent. It was between him and Allen Wallace. And uh, Allen Wallace got the call. So that just told, that just shows you where Fury is that he's fighting. Prospects, you know what I'm saying? That's just that's just getting out of mindset. Junior Far is a prospect, man. I I had a chance to watch him fight live. You know what I'm saying? He fought on the top rank card. I went to uh, June 28th with Kome when Kome fought Beltran. He was on that card. He was on the dark. It was after the after the lights went out and everything. The TV was off. He was the last fight of the night. I sat down and watched it. He fought Dominique Gwynn. in the first couple of rounds. He was he was beating up Gwen, doing what he do. The fourth round, he got dropped by Gwen. He got dropped hard, and I ain't, I thought he was hurt, bro, like for real. But he got up. He showed his composure, man. I seen Lou DeBella jump off his seat. He was pacing back and forth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit was kind of funny. But um, he got up and uh, he won every round after that. So I had to give him props for that. But he a big kid. I think he like six five, two sixty. He been in count with Wilder and. You know what I'm saying? So he he been getting the education in this in this uh, game of boxing. He's a good fighter, man. I just think sometimes, like in that fight I watched, he was he was lackadaisical, man. He got hit with a big right hand, uh, and he was kind of he was kind of like, I don't know, you know how like in some fights some guys just go through the motions. That's what happened. The the old vet WD Gwynn hit him with a, a good shot and dropped his ass, and uh, it was crazy. Roly looked like a bar for yeah, Roly yeah. When Roley step up in competition, he gonna have some problems. I seen that too. He he did he wasn't setting nothing up. He was just winging punches, and he got to do up out of there. But when he gets somebody with some skills, like like honestly, I think if he fought Ryan Garcia right now, Ryan Garcia might stop that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because these Ryan Garcia can set his shit up. You know what I'm saying? He can keep him at big with a jab, and the way he counter, he can he can he can punch in between where Roley was doing. But yeah, he I ain't like how he looked. He got throw back to me and yeah, Roly <laughs> Roly funny though. I, I I mean, I appreciate what he brings to the table though. So yeah, Junior Five, man. Junior Five fighting Devin Vargas. Vargas is coming off an upset win over uh Nile Kennedy. It was one of those underground fight cards, you know what I'm saying? You had to catch. Uh, it was a couple months ago. He stopped him. You know, Vargas is a journeyman. He was the captain of the twenty uh no, excuse me. Yeah, the 2004 Olympic team, the one that Andre Ward was on. So, you know what I'm saying? He he's a he's a uh <laughs> he's a journeyman. He got he got uh he lost to well, he got stopped by Andy Ruiz Jr. and uh Dominic Brazil. So, 
You know what I'm saying? Junior Fall should have a good time in this fight. Um, Hemi, Ohio, he he's facing. He's another heavyweight prospect. He's from down there in Tonga. You know what I'm saying? Same as Junior Fa. You know what I'm saying? You know, them tough, them dudes tough, bro. You know what I'm saying? They're like the head strengthers and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got, you know what I'm saying? They come to fight, but he's fighting another journeyman, Joshua Tuffy. He should be able to stop him. Probably the best fight on the card is Ivan Golop versus uh, Javier Gonzalez at uh, Welterweight. Golop is a prospect, you know what I'm saying? He fights uh, out of Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, with the, uh, with the Andre Rocher camp, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, he's a good fighter, man. Gonzalez, his last fight was with uh, Jamal James. He got stopped with a body shot. You know what I'm saying? Ball head kid. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that shit, man. All these fights, man. I'm gonna watch it some way or another. If they coincide with each other, I'm gonna find a way to uh, go back and watch a replay. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, Marlon said, "I'm not. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about pro. I'm talking about club. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you." Yeah, he look like, yeah, he's at the, <laughs> yep, I'm with you. Because he was, he won't, he was just throwing punches, bro. He won't nothing to it, what he was doing. He just came to him and just started throwing punches. He ain't said nothing up. And that, that shit gonna hurt him down the, that shit gonna hurt him down the road. You know what I'm saying? So, I think Roley, like, I don't understand, though. Like, maybe he doing that against these opponents that he know he can beat. Which is, I, I feel you, you know what I'm saying? But you in the Mayweather gym with all those coaches and whatnot, like, are they teaching you anything? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. At least throw, at least learn how to throw the jab, at least, to set your shots up. You're a power puncher, so the power not going to go nowhere, obviously. So how about you, you know what I'm saying, set your shit up? You know what I'm saying? Do it the right way. And if they're not teaching you that, then it's a problem. Maybe you got to go to another gym. <laughs> There's a bunch of gyms in uh in Vegas he can go to, but I think he's strong though. He's strong as hell. All right, so here's another card I want to talk about, man. This is an underrated fight. This might be the best fight of the weekend, bro. Like real talk, like 50-50 wise, you got some young up and coming fighters. I know y'all see those belts on the Avatar. Like man, what the hell? But they got <laughs> they got a bunch of belts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Commonwealth. Um, titles and shit, British titles. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, Lee McGregor facing uh, Farouk. I forget his first name. Let me see. I forget his first name off top. But he's a good fighter, man. Both of these guys are good fighters. Cash Farouk versus Lee McGregor. This is for the, uh, the Commonwealth and British titles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like over here. That's like the USBA and the damn WBC Continental of America's title. That's back in the day shit. That's 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 Tuesday night fight shit right there. That might lost some people, but um, that's what that is. You know what I'm saying? Basically, um, that's a good fight, man. Bantamweight title. So you know, Bantamweight is popping right now. Um, he knows Ryan weak, but but he knows Ryan weak, but better than him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he probably be careful though, man. Ryan, I think Ryan a little bit quicker than him. I he got he I think he need to progress more, man. He gonna have to get he gonna have to tone his skills up. He can punch, and that shit ain't going nowhere. I'm talking about uh Roley. That shit ain't going nowhere. But I think just sharpen up his toolkit, and then I think if he's sharpen that up, shit, yeah, now he a problem because if he know how to establish it, the same way how like. How uh, Madonna, we know he can punch and he was wild and rugged and all type of shit. And once he started to develop his jab, he became a different fighter. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But Lee McGregor versus uh, Cash Farouk, man, this is a good fight, yo. Underrated. Um, McGregor, he has a lot of fights on the Josh Taylor card, on Josh Taylor undercard. So he's been getting a lot of exposure, but you know, a lot of the normal boxing fan probably don't know him. But he's tough. He's like, if he keep progressing, he'll be one of those top guys at a uh, bantamweight. Same for Cash Farouk. Now he's another good one. You know what I'm saying? Both of these guys style match up real well. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to this because this is the type of fight that these young men, you know, it's gonna help them progress. You know what I'm saying? As you fight better competition and whatnot. So, yeah, man. 
This might be the fight of the weekend for real. Uh, let me see what's next. Um, so you got another Golden Board card on Saturday, man. Like I said, these streaming services services is, is crazy. Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. You got Cano versus uh, Ortiz. Cano, <clears throat> excuse me, he uh he hasn't fought since that uh, first round knockout win in January over uh Jorge Linares at 140. That was a WBC title eliminator. So I don't know what's going on with that. I know Jose Ramirez bought the fight. Um, Victor Post style in February uh, for the WBC mandatory. So I don't know what that put him at. But Cano been around for a minute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think he been leaking uh, those pictures of uh, Asa De La Hoya, man, because he always on, he always get big fights, man. He fought Paulie Bonaggi on a, <laughs> on a pay-per-view. He fought Shane Mosley on a pay-per-view. I don't know how the hell he deserved that. And he been around for a minute. I don't even think he cracked 30 yet. I believe he like 28 or 29. So, but he can punch. He always been a good puncher and shit. He's fighting Ortiz. You know, Ortiz, uh, I think his name, Mousa Ortiz or something like that. He was a good up and coming guy from Argentina, but he been he been catching a couple of L's lately. He he lost to uh, Selden a couple of years ago. Got stopped in like three rounds or something like that. Virgil Ortiz stopped him. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he can punch a little bit, but I think this is gonna this is gonna be a good fight though. Can know he cuts a lot, so you know what I'm saying we'll see uh, if that plays a role in this fight. But you know what I'm saying decent little scrap on a Saturday night. That's that's a that's on the 16th uh, Facebook. Like once again, you guys want to check the times? Check my description box. I got a uh, got a list of a bunch of fights. All right, let me see what else we got, man. I think ESPN Plus got like three card, three or four cards this weekend. Crazy. I'm gonna see kind of let me see. It's a light heavyweight fight I want to get into. Um, it's for like a WBA interim title. Uh let me see. Can I find the, the shit? <laughs> Man. But I like I like uh weekends like this though, because this shit helped me learn. This is what I learned the most, to be honest. I don't learn shit like next week. With Wilder, when all the when all the casual fans gonna come back, I don't learn nothing. I already know. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you don't really get too much from that. If anything, you're gonna get a lot of haters and shit coming on and shit. You gotta hear this shit. A lot of people wear about <laughs> Wilder's nose ring or some shit. Like he can't fight. <laughs> Crazy shit. All right, so you got a light heavyweight uh interim title on the line. WBA interim title. You got the IBO champion. You know what I'm saying? Let me, uh, his name is, uh, was it, Seven? Slev Florin. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me on their names. These guys from Germany. So, you know what I'm saying? The names, they can get you. Um, he's the one holding the IBO belt. You know what I'm saying? These guys are like back. If y'all don't know these guys, they kind of like uh, top 10 ish, back, you know what I'm saying? Back half, like top 15, top 10 type fighters from Germany. So you got Slev, uh, Slorin, and, and he's fighting um, Dominique Basile. You know what I'm saying? Both guys got only one loss. Basile got stopped by Carl Marat. Do you remember him? That he fought uh, Bernard Hopkins back in the day. And then Florin, he he beat up on uh, Carl uh, Marat. He beat Marat. So both guys got a common opponent. The IBO champion, he beat Marat, and the other guy got stopped in 11 rounds by Marat. So... Um, this is this is a competitive fight, man. Uh, it's on ESPN Plus. So yeah, check the description again for that. Check the link I post um, to catch the start time for that. Now, when I see in this fight, um, it's interesting me a little bit because Top Rank is very invested, heavily invested at 175 pounds at the moment. Of course, they got uh, they got Boche who just lost to Bird BF. He's a unified champion right now. Jesse Hart bought the fight. Joe Smith in uh, January. Alvarez bought the fight. Michael Seals. That's a, a bum ass fight right there. And they got Zerto Ramirez. So I just started putting two, two and two together. I we haven't seen Zerto in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, he was on the was he on the Fury on the card or some shit like that? That was like in June. That's been a minute. I think he fought. Uh, 
I forgot when he fought uh, Jesse Hart. I don't think he fought twice this year. I may be wrong. But see, Zerto haven't had an opponent. These guys, if you look at Zerto's resume, they fit the bill. Because Zerto really hasn't been fighting top-notch competition. His best opponent is Jesse Hart. And both those fights went life or death. So when I see these two guys fighting on ESPN+, Plus, I'm like, oh, okay. Now they set up an opponent for Zerto. Because we haven't seen Zerto in a minute. As far as this fight, it should be a good fight, man. Interesting fight, you know what I'm saying? Standard European styles, both guys, you know what I'm saying? But Vasile is kind of uh, kind of more aggressive than Florian, but both of these guys can fight, though, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, <laughs> Zerto's next opponent is on deck already. So it, it's crazy because they be throwing these fights out there, and people like, well, I can't speak. I can't speak for nobody but myself. But when I see it, I'm like, man, who y'all fooling, bro? Y'all know Zerto. This is this is an opponent. This like food for Zerto. You know what I'm saying? Why else would ESPN Plus show two obscure uh, German opponents, <laughs> fighters? You know what I'm saying? On that network for what? You know what I'm saying? We know the average fan not even checking for them. So I'd be like, ah, okay, you got Zerto on deck. Okay, too easy. You know what I'm saying? So, they be trying to slip that by you, though. But I be saying that shit. <laughs> you can't fool you can't fool no fan like me because I be on all that shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, let me see. It's another fight, man. It's a bunch of fights, man. I'll make sure I ain't leading nothing out. I think I did. But, oh, I got another one, man. I want to check out. I'm going to get my avatar right. So, um... Y'all remember Dwayne Beeman that fought uh, Estrada in August? He's coming back, man. He got a fight coming up. Let me see. Can I find his joint? He's fighting in Orlando for the WBC Continentals of America's Championship, I think. Now, I remember that belt used to mean some shit back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember that. I think Wilder had it before he uh, became world champion. But, yeah, that's the avatar right there. Beeman versus Solano. You know what I'm saying? Um. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's gonna be a competitive fight, man. Solano bring that heat. Uh, I think Zerto would get hurt at seventy five. Now I think Zerto be all right. I like Zerto. Zerto, you know, one thing about Zerto, he gonna, uh, he got a good work rate. Maybe he can shore up on his defense. So maybe that's what you are talking about him getting hurt. So yeah, he gonna have to improve his defense at one seventy five, for sure. But I think. He's going to have the work rate to be able to compete with these guys. And he's big. He's big. Like He's probably the biggest light heavyweight right now, if you think about it. I mean, yeah, uh, Berbiev is, <clears throat> is like cut up and everything. He's like 5'11". But Zerto, his last fight, he was damn near. He rehydrated to like 195 and some shit. So we'll see. But I, I, I see what you're saying, though, because if he's getting a hit, like he been getting hit and don't fix that defense, then yeah, it's gonna be a problem. But yeah, Beeman, man, he back in the ring. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm glad to see him back though. He put up a good a good effort against uh Estrada. You know what I'm saying? Estrada was just too good for him. So um, you know what I'm saying? That's good that he's getting back. He's getting the uh another uh friends uh title on the line, the WBC. So I mean, he's at 115, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of opportunities. Maybe he can be an opponent for somebody else, you know what I'm saying, or get another payday. So, you know what I'm saying? Salute to him, man, um, for being able to bounce back after a tough loss. So, yeah, man, I'm going to definitely try to watch that shit for sure. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Next one. I missed one, man. It's going to be early in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. On uh. Sunday morning, no, actually Friday morning, shit. Yeah, the first one, I should have did this one first, but um, <laughs> you got a, you got a car out of Australia, man, the Maloney brothers, man, let me get the joint. Yeah, the Maloney brothers, uh, Jason and Andrew, you know what I'm saying? These are some good fighters, man. Um, Jason fights at bounceweight 118. He was in a World Boxing Super Series. He lost to Emmanuel Rodriguez. It was a good competitive fight. You know what I'm saying? He's still, he's a good fighter, man. Still. I think, and he's with, uh, he signed with top rank. Both guys, both brothers are signed with top rank. Twin brothers, they signed with top rank. So, 
we all know anyway just signed. So he's gonna need opponents. You know what I'm saying? So they got they got some work for him for uh for anyway, you know what I'm saying? After he healed and all that good shit. They got Joshua Grid Jr. They got this kid right here, Jason Maloney. As a lion Tate, he's fighting next week. He's a WBO champion. You know what I'm saying? Then he can move up to get Navarrete and all that good shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Jason Jason Maloney got to look good. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He got to keep his ranking and uh, just perform well because he can be a possible opponent. But uh, anyway, his brother, Andrew Maloney, is is the WBA mandatory for uh, Cal Ufi. So he gets the winner between Cal Ufi and uh, Estrada. They're fighting in, um, in January unification. So... He got, you know, what I'm saying he got to hold down his position too. But uh, this car right here is hella early, man. It's a uh, midnight <laughs> West Coast time, you know what I'm saying? Three o'clock on the East Coast. So I don't know, I don't know if everybody's gonna be able to catch this shit. But you can all, you can always go back and watch the, e the replay. This is on ESPN Plus. So like I said, ESPN Plus got four cars this weekend. They got two on Friday. This Australia car with the Maloney brothers. Then Rocky Fielding, you know what I'm saying? That's like uh, noon time uh, on Friday. Then Saturday, they got that German fight I was talking about with the light heavyweights. They might fight uh, Zerto. And then Lee McGregor versus Cash Farouk. So, man, like I said, this is a hardcore boxing fan shit, man. For real. This shit ain't, this shit ain't right at your fingertips. You got to go look for this shit, for real. <laughs> and you forget the times, the fight going to bend over. But you can always go back and watch it. For re you know, I'm saying I got you know I've been missing some fights, but I go back and watch it just so I can get the research. You know, what I'm saying I missed some of the Pulev fight last weekend, and uh, the first half was uh no, I seen all of the Heron fight, but I missed the Pulev fight. I had to go back and watch it, and man, I was sleepy after watching that shit though, <laughs> for real. Um, so yeah, man, it's some it's some female fights too, man. Um, it's one that's of note I want to talk about. Because this is in the 130 pound division. And I like, if y'all been rocking me, y'all remember me ever heard me say this 130 is the best division in women's boxing, bro. Like, hands down. Like, you know what I'm saying? No doubt about it. Like, it's not even close. So, you got, oh, uh, they, they fight for the WBC interim title at 130. You got, you got Katrina. Sanders versus Daniela Ramos. Ramos fought for this title earlier this year. She lost to uh, the French lady, uh, McCam, something like that. Y'all got to look that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but she's coming back again, man. She's a tough fighter. You know what I'm saying? I think she's from Brazil. Sanders uh, is very good technically. She's a good technical fighter. She's 12 and 12 and over, one knockout. Um, she's very technical, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it made for a good fight because uh, Ramos is coming with it. So, you know, you got the classic boxer, boxer and the aggressive style fighter. Um, there's some smoking 130, though. You know what I'm saying? Segway to 130. You know what I'm saying? We've seen uh, Daphne, Pearson, Daphne Pearson. She just entered the 130. She had a good fight with Helen Joseph to win the WBA interim title. You know what I'm saying? That was on Monday. So you got her. You got... Uh, my, uh, what's her name? Hamadou. She's the IBF champion. Like I said, she like the uh, Ruslan for Robin call for women's boxing for real. The way she fights, she a beast. Michaela Mayer, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get world title shot. You got Terry Harper. She's nice as hell. You know what I'm saying? Young fighter. The, she's the IBO champion from England. You know what I'm saying? You got Ava Barniska. She's the WBO champion from Poland. You got Ava Wallstrom, the WBC champion. You know what I'm saying she got a fight coming up on the thirtieth, and then she gonna fight Terry Harper. Uh, you got a bunch of ladies, man. Alicia Baumgartner, you know, what I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all y'all know her from her pictures and whatnot. You know, what I'm saying, and she can fight though, so don't let, don't get that twisted. Uh, Tierra Brown, like it's so many, bro. It's so many, like that that division is deep for real, for real. And that was like if this was the male, the men, that shit would get hella coverage, man. I'm a I keep saying this, man, but I'm gonna get when I get my shit together. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mess around and do. Once a week, I'm gonna do a show about women's boxing, bro. And uh, I'm gonna invite the ones that really rock with women's boxing like that. You know what I'm saying? Like a uh, real gun. I know you rock with women's boxing like that. Whoever else, 
and come on. We're gonna talk about women's boxing. We're gonna break down some shit. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> yeah, man. I wanna I wanna diverse. I'm gonna be diverse on my shit because I think I got the I got the um the knowledge to do it, not just talk about you know whatever. I can talk about multiple things and whatnot. So yeah, man, because I think right now women's boxing, man, it's crazy. It's popping, yo. And it's a so it's so much shit going on. It's just just as much going on as the men's shit. Not as much, of course, but it's a lot of stuff going on. Like Carissa Shields just got her fight just got announced for uh January the 10th. She's gonna run it back. This is the third time a charm. This fight been canceled twice with uh Ivana Hobbison. We all know what happened the last time in October with uh coach Ali Bashir. And then the first time it got canceled, um Carissa, uh I think she dislocated her knee or some shit like that. So they supposed to fight. They're going to run it back on Showtime, man. Finally, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> she got some smoke at 154. You know what I'm saying? Whether you believe it or not, she got some work to do. You know what I'm saying? If she want to um, become undisputed that that division. Um, you know what I'm saying? Raquel Miller, she, just, she about to get her world title opportunity next week on short notice. Um, she's fighting on uh, she's fighting in Canada on a uh, on the world champions card, the IBF champion Marie Declare at 154. So, like I said, it's some smoke at 154. And Carissa is fighting for the WBC and WBO against uh, Habison in January. And then uh, if Declare and uh, Raquel Miller win, then they're going to unify early next year. So, there you go. It op- it's opened up the doors for another undisputed. So, but not just that, man. Kay Taylor, you know what I'm saying, doing her thing. She had a good victory a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> um, she she decided to box and and you know, just you know be the matador in that fight, pot shot to win that win that fight pretty good. Um, Chantel Cameron last week. I don't know if you seen her. She's nice, you know what I'm saying. She's the mandatory for uh Jessica McCaffrey. So it's go on and on, man. Like I said, I'm a I gotta I gotta formulate a game plan on how I'm gonna rock this shit, the women's boxing, cause it's a lot, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff, but you know what I'm saying? I just wanna keep keep talking about this shit though, because me, I just love I love the sport because it's so much, it's so much to, to look at, man. You can always look at the young prospect from a puppy all the way up to a world champion. And speaking of that, man, I got an avatar too. I wanna talk about this shit, underrated type shit. But it's just so many fights, man, to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? You can keep it about boxing always. Like this young man right here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you go. Truck Simpson. He's fighting this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Um, his his He's fighting in D.C., I believe. And uh, they're going to stream this on the Shabazz Brothers uh, Facebook page. So look out for that. Shabazz Brothers. You know what I'm saying? They're the promoter. So Truck man, he nice as hell. 168 pounds. Um, he's strong as hell. Strong fighter. Got a nice ass amateur background. So that's what I'm saying. Like that's why I enjoy these these cars right here. These cars that I have to find. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like like equivalent to like a DJ going dig into the crates. You know what I'm saying? That's how I relate this to. Like you gotta go find this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta go. If you gotta go to their Instagram page and be like, "Yo, when you fight, uh, whatever, man," that that's how I be trying. That's how I try to get some of my info, or you know, because I want to be like, "Yo, I seen him as when he was three and oh Now he developed into this, and he bought the fight for a world title. You know what I'm saying? So, and also it helped me break down fights easier. So if I know the guy already, you know what I'm saying, I can break it down easy. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Go to box rec and watch all his fights. I probably already have a couple fights in my memory brain. Like, okay, I seen him fight this guy right here. Now I might have to go back and just do a little bit more so I can get a a, a proper prediction or whatever or how I think the fight gonna go. But for the most part, I be knowing most of these guys, man. Um, it's another little card I want to talk about. You know, as I'm just scrolling through, looking at some stuff. Um. This is an interesting fight to me. You know what I'm saying? Right here. Interesting fight, man. <laughs> you got uh 
Francisco Fonseca. You remember him from fighting Tank? That was like one of the, that was Tank's worst performance when he lost the uh the title on the scale. You know what I'm saying? And he fought Tammy Farmer last year. Um, he's fighting a guy named Alice Alice the Mag the Maghani, something like that. I know I messed that up. But this guy Alex, man, now it's interesting. It's interesting about this guy. He's a softball from the UK. Okay, he's a boxer. You know what I'm saying? Got some fast hands. You know what I'm saying? He he brings the smoke. I'm gonna put his name in the chat so you can go look him up. But this kid right here, that's why I love that's why I love this boxing shit, man. You find all little tidbits about these guys, you be like, for real. This guy. Hold on, let me put his name in the chat real quick so y'all go check him out. All right, so this guy right here. He went to he went to Mexico to learn his craft under Nacho Berstein and and he sparred in some of uh, Juan Manuel Marquez's biggest like his two biggest fights. Well, shit, his last two fights basically uh, Pacquiao three, Pacquiao four. He was the lead sparring partner, and he got he learned his craft down there, and so that has to give you some hella hella confidence. He's a young guy. And he, this was like 2011, 2012, something like that. Those fights happened, and he was a lead sparring partner. So, for for a Hall of Fame fighter to have you in camp to learn the trade, and he was he had to be at his best because he how he performed against Pacquiao, he was at his peak. So for you to be able to go to two camps back to back with a Hall of Fame fighter. And I guess you holding your own because if, if he stopping you and getting you up out of there, he don't need you in camp. So I guess he brought some good work for him to prepare him for Pacquiao. So when I when I seen that man, that shit was like, damn, I like that shit. He's 19 and one, you know what I'm saying? He got a loss early in his career, but he been on a little roll, um, fights at 130. He's a he's a good fighter, man. He's a good fighter, and having that experience under your belt can only make you go up. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, man, I'm interested in this fight too. Uh, this fight on Channel Five in the UK, so you have to go. I'm gonna post that link in the description again, where you can find all these fights. That, you know, what I'm saying the schedule. So if you're interested in that fight, man, definitely check that out. <clears throat> but he's fighting Fonseca. Fonseca, a tough, he's a tough dude. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. He he always comes to fight. He might not be the most talented, but he comes to fight. And I think he has a decent chin. You know, I know Tank stopped him. Yeah, that that was behind the head, but it's he still stopped him. But that's Tank. Tank stopping everybody. But this, I think this is gonna be a fun little fight, man. I and I, I just love hearing stories like that. Like, damn, you been in account, you been in account with the champ when this dude was at his A plus <laughs> plus, because you know he stopped Pacquiao in uh in the fourth fight. You know what I'm saying? And you you endured all that. Because he was strong as hell during that camp. So, you know what I'm saying? Salute to that shit right there. So, yeah, man. I'm going to do a quick recap. If y'all still here, man, rock with me. I'm just going to go go in anyway. Re, uh, recap of last week. Oh, Devin Haney versus uh, Alfredo Santiago. You know what I'm saying? That was one of the fights that I kind of figured was going to happen off the rip. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was a decent fight. You know what I'm saying? Devin Haney, when you get these guys short notice and shit, and you really don't know much about, and it's it's kind of tough, but I think he did what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was competitive, but Devin Haney was winning all the rounds to me. Dropped him in the fifth round, and then after that, I thought Santiago didn't want to really fight no more. Um, Santiago, I didn't even know he had 170 amateur uh, fights, and he was like 160, 161, some shit like that. So that tells you furthermore that this guy, he was better than what a lot of people expected. You know what I'm saying? So um it's a good it was a decent performance, man, for the, the notice and the type of opponent it was. So I think he hurt his shoulder in that fight, so he's gonna have to recover or whatever. And uh news just came down that uh <coughs> Fortuna is uh they're gonna have a purse bid for him to fight for Fortuna. Which I think is a good fight, man. It is a very good step up for Haney because that's the type of opponents he needs. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's gonna help him develop. You know, Fortuna is tricky, herky jerky, got some pop. 
dirty at times. You know what I'm saying? He he gonna bring everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, he never really got ran through. Like if you look at his fights, the fights with Sosa when he got he got stopped in the eleven round, he just got caught. You know what I'm saying? He was beating up on Sosa. The fight with Easter. Some people thought he beat Easter. It was a Fugazi knockdown. Early in that fight, he came back and got himself back in the fight. So Fortuna ain't no punk. <laughs> so I think it's a good fight for Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? For real. Uh, Billy Joe, ah, he looked lackluster in his last fight. I ain't like that performance. I thought he was, uh, what well, I have it? I think I had him, I had it even after 10. Like he needed that knockout for real. And I know some people were ha- having the other guy winning. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> people people use the narrative he's not on the uh on the what they call it, the nasal spray no more. So now he's looking like that. Um I mean you could I guess you could say that. I just think to me, watching Billy Joe's whole career, he always fought to the level of his competition. Go back and look at his career, bro. Look at the, the fighters, his best performances is the fighters that caused the most threat. You know what I'm saying? His best performances was um, Lemieux and uh, Andy Lee and Eubank. He performed well in those fights. But other fights, he struggled. Akhavov, he looked like trash. So this fight, I thought he started off well, but I thought the guy, like he was hitting him with shots you shouldn't get hit with. And I think he was too flat-footed. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So all I want to hear, he was fighting trash so he can get the Canelo fight. I don't think that's the case. I just think he was flat. And maybe the Kambiraw sh- or the uh, Nasus first shit has something to do with it. I don't know. But he got the knockout win, so it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, Jamel Herring last week put on a good performance, man. I like that performance. That was a good fight with him and Lamont Rose. I was kind of disappointed with Lamont Roach because my mindset thinking going to that fight, I'm like, okay, these guys sparred a lot of rounds together. They know each other from the headbangers gym and whatever. And so you know what each guy brings to the table. And you know what you got to do. You know Jamel Heron is 5'11", saw Paul, uh, got good combination, good jab, like the fight off the back foot. You know what I'm saying? He want to commit, but not too much. You want to keep you at the range. So you know what you have to do. You got to use your jab, cut the ring off, use pressure. And you know what I'm saying? We know what you got to do. You got to get inside that work. And I felt like the first four rounds, he didn't do nothing. He was just trying to counter, counter the counter puncher. And like I said before in my breakdown, <clears throat> which guy going to be more aggressive? You know what I'm saying? Whoever, because both of these guys coming into the fight was counter punches. So I'm thinking, whoever's going to be the most aggressive guy is going to win. And that was Heron to me. Uh, I thought he won the first four rounds. Four, I forget how I scored it, but I thought he won the four, first four rounds. And I think it was even after that, 4-4. Four, four. So I scored it 8-4. I thought the fight was kind of – he. I thought Heron won that fight clear. You know what I'm saying? So I think – I know LeBron Roach got to be kicking himself because it had he start early, maybe he could have got a knockout win. Or maybe he could have – did enough to impress, uh, impress the judges because it was one car was like 115, 113. So they, they enjoyed his work. Um, He hurt Heron with a big right hand in the, in the 11th round. But, you know, I, th- I thought if he would have started earlier, maybe he could have did that shit earlier. And maybe he could have pressed the issue, but he gave away a lot of rounds. Shout out to Bo Mac. <laughs> Bo was calling out everything, bro. He was like, he coming, you know what I'm saying? He was telling him exactly what he had to do. And all he had to do was listen to Bo Man. That's what he did. So that shit was kind of funny. The dude was screaming on outside the ring. And, and everything he did, he did, you know, that's what he was doing. So uh, that was a, that was a good one for Heron. What's next for Heron? My opinion, I think he's waiting for the uh, Carl Frampton and uh, Tyler McCleary winner. That's a... November the 30th, I'm here in Vegas. Well, I'm not in Vegas, but on the West Coast in Vegas. Um, so that's why I see. I don't see no unification. I think Burchett, he's waiting for uh, Valdez. If Valdez wins, him and Burchett going to run it. <coughs> uh, we all know Tevin Farmer is in negotiations to fight Jojo Diaz. So Castillo, Castillo I'm sorry, he's fighting uh, next week. He's defending his WBA regular title. 
Then you got Leo fighting for the super ch- <laughs> the super title <laughs> at 130, man. It's crazy. So, but I see uh Jamar Heron fighting. If Carl Frampton get past McCleary, I can see him fighting him next, which is another good fight. You know what I'm saying? Old Pulev, man, still kicking. <laughs> he fought uh Rydell Booker last week. Um, he won a decision to maintain his IBF mandatory spot. And I thought about that Booker won, won the first round. And then after that, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Pulev, man, he's hard to watch to me. Um, he don't bring too much to the table. He got a good jab and whatnot, good right hand. But I don't <sighs> frustrating to watch him. He was getting hit with a lot of good shots, man. It's just Booker didn't have. He had no steam on the punches, or he wasn't consistent enough to maintain that attack. But Pulev just basically beat him up against the ropes all fight. After the second round, the dude went straight to the ropes, and he just won every round. So Pulev, he got the mandatory position, and it was ordered for him to fight the winner of AJ, well, Ruiz and AJ, you know what I'm saying? By May, so that fights that you know how the, the IBF they order some shit, you can pretty much count that shit as one hundred. So <clears throat> I can see that if it so happened that the winner of uh, Ruiz AJ uh, don't fight him, then Pulev is gonna fight the next available contender, which is Adam Kornacki. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know this. Y'all haven't heard shit from Kornacki, right? Kornacki been chilling. He fought in August, and then. Uh, he had a fight in January, and he's been chilling. So, in my opinion, he's in the cut. He got to, you got to look at it. Look at the dynamics of shit. They probably waiting for the IBF to be vacant because he got a he got a good ass manager, Keith Conley. If y'all don't know who Keith Conley is, he uh he got Devonchenko and he got Danny Jacobs, and he got them some big money in their last fights. Danny Jacobs made like 13, 12, 13 million. I don't know. And uh, Devin Chenko made $4 million for Triple G. So he know how to negotiate, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he got Konaki. So he probably just waiting in the wings to see what happened. So I don't think Konaki going to make any moves until we see what happened with uh, Ruiz and AJ. And in my opinion, the winner of that fight, they're going to get done just like the, they, uh, the IBF did Tyson Fury. When Tyson Fury beat uh, Vlad Klitschko. They're gonna get they're gonna give him 10 days. Yo, I need y'all to negotiate. And if he declining or whatever, because you gotta look, it, there's no rematch clause in this one. This is the me, this is the rematch clause. So the winner, they they pretty much can do, you know, I said they good. Um so the mandatory for the IBF was ordered before the mandatory for the WO was ordered. So the IBF is next, you know what I'm saying? So that's next in the rotation. So they're going to either have to fight Pulev or that's it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to get stripped. So we'll see, man. <laughs> we'll definitely see. You know, people say, you know, the PBC don't recognize the WO. So that that would be the belt that, they, <laughs> that they be, they'll leave behind. But I don't, I'm not too sure. Well, first of all, I don't agree that the PBC – is not acknowledging the WO because you got hella PBC fighters in their rankings paying sanction fees. So I just dispelled that notion right there. But uh, I think if they decide to drop the belt, and it can be a strategic move, you know what I'm saying? Everything Al Heyman do, bro, is strategic, bro. Because it's all going to revolve around, you know what I'm saying, the decision he makes for his fighters. You feel what I'm saying? Just peep me on this. If let's say Andy Ruiz win, <clears throat> and let's say he dropped the IBF, like man, fuck the IBF. It's still gonna stay in the PBC circle because then you got uh Kornacki fighting uh Pulev. You know what I'm saying? You can always get that fight. They guys were calling each other out anyway. So Heyman still wins. And that's the fight Kornacki can win. Cause Kornacki not gonna stay on the ropes and just let you beat up on him. He's gonna be fighting, you know what I'm saying? And then Ruiz can get Usyk fight, which probably a bigger fight if they if they had to go to purse beat. It's probably a bigger fight, you know what I'm saying? So financially speaking, so it all depends, bro. You know what I'm saying? I would like to see undisputed, of course, but we know, you know what I'm saying? While they get past Ortiz, he got Fury, and that's already set. 
So they gotta have to do something else, you know what I'm saying, until that time. So yeah, man. <laughs> That's crazy. But then IBF don't be playing. Uh there's one thing I wanna hop back on real quick before I bounce. Um uh, so I talked about Devin Haney. He got faces mandatory in uh Fortuna. And Devin Haney got two back to back mandatories. You know what I'm saying? So they treat it like he won a big title, just like Charlo had to do and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so my question, I was thinking like, who is gonna be the second mandatory? Tank is number one, but he's about to fight for the regular. So that effectively gonna take him out of that. Number three is Campbell. You know what I'm saying? Number four is Ryan Garcia. So I'm thinking maybe they can uh they're gonna order that fight to be the second man. That's a good fight too. And that's a big ass step up for uh King Rye. You know what I'm saying? So I won't be surprised, man, if they did that, man. Just this one little note I want to throw out there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. I'm about to raise up out of here, man. I appreciate all you guys rocking with me coming through. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you guys check out those links I posted. Check the description if you guys uh, got any questions about what fights coming on and the schedule or whatnot. Like I said, it's a hardcore underground type of weekend. A bunch of fights going on, but you know what I'm saying? It, 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 still, ain't no, it still ain't no excuse not to watch because <laughs> there ain't no big fight going on. They'll get you ready for next week. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good, though. So shout out to everybody that came through, man, that uh, rock with the channel. Support me, man. I appreciate it. And I'm out.